I'm Mark. And I'm Josh. And this is Alter Ego Comics TV, episode number 113. We're coming to you from Alter Ego Comics here in Lima, Ohio, the best comic book store in Allen County, the only comic book store in Allen County. <laughs> Got to be honest, full disclosure there. Uh, another huge week for comics, just so many books to read. But we've, we've whittled it down for you to the books that we think you absolutely need to pick up this week. And I will start with Thor, God of Thunder, number seven. This is written by Jason Aaron with artwork by Isad Ribic. It's the team that's been on the book from the beginning, all seven issues of it. <laughs> and it is, it's from the beginning I could tell that this was going to be awesome. And it is. It's so much fun. It's the, beautiful to look at, the characterization of Thor. Having three different Thors to work with, uh, young Thor in the in 800-something, in the year 800, uh, present-day Thor and future Thor, it's so full of Thor. <laughs> this, is, this book has more Thor than any other book I've ever read. And it's great to see uh, current present-day Thor and future Thor team up in this issue. Uh, and it's it's almost like they're not the same person, even though they are. It's almost like Odin and Thor versus Thor and Thor. And you see how Thor, the old Thor has spent, what, 9,000 years or 900 years or something like that in isolation because of the bombardment by Gore's shadow puppets or whatever they are. Uh, it's just, it's a great... Norse mythology tale, a great Thor story, and you really absolutely should pick it up. And this is a good jumping out point. It's the first part of the God Bomb storyline, which is really a continuation of what's been going on in the previous six issues, but uh, highly recommended. Jason Aaron is just doing wondrous things over at Marvel Comics. Thank you, sir. And if the mighty, I'm sorry, if Thor, God of Thunder, does not have enough Thors in it for you, this week you can also pick up Uncanny Avengers number six, written by Rick Reminder with art by Daniel Acuna. Uh, it also features Thor. In this case, uh, we have a character sort of similar chronologically to the young Thor from the regular Thor book. Uh, it's Thor before he has Mjolnir. He's wheeling around an axe, which has its own name that I can't pronounce. And uh, Thor, in days of yore, as he wants, goes amongst men drinking. And runs a foul apocalypse and it's really cool my, my initial thought was that's dumb but they've both been around forever and i really like the way remeter put the story together uh we have some other forces influencing and perhaps manipulating both parties and it's just a really cool fun avenger story and i like that because we have so many avengers books on the shelf every month i like that this one is not tying into the same current continuity it's it's back stuff it's back matter it's old stories set chronologically prior to everything else so it does you don't have to wonder oh why is thor doing this while well, he's in eight other books and he's off planet here and he's lost in time there and he's destroyed and i i just really enjoyed it i thought it was a fun fresh thor book thor versus apocalypse how's that not something you want to read hawkeye number 9 by matt fraction and david aha aja Will we ever figure out how to pronounce that guy's name? I will have to meet you sometime and ask how to pronounce Maybe I'll just email you. How to pronounce your name. Um, this is a continuation of how great this book is. Uh, it's, it's truly wondrous. Matt Fraction is doing some outstanding stuff here. He's really captured the essence of Hawkeye, I think. The dialogue in this book is unlike anything else that's being written in the Marvel Universe right now. Um, and a big part of that is because there are no capes and tights. It's all street level. Uh, Hawkeye in his civilian garb, trying to do good as a, a citizen of, of New York. Um, we get to, this is the second part of a two part story, where Hawkeye's uh, previous loves are all sitting around, apparently playing cards with him at Avengers Mansion. That would be Mockingbird, his ex wife, uh, Black Widow, his former flame, and Spider Woman, his current love interest when the red-headed stranger from earlier in the series pops in. This all happened last issue. And then things go crazy, and it's it's just, oh, the artwork, Aja's artwork is outstanding. Perfect for this book, and I've said it many times, uh, this really has the feel of an indie comic. If you're a fan of uh, stuff from Image and Dark Horse and some of the independent publishers, and you're looking to dip your toe into the Marvel Universe, Hawkeye is the book you want to start with. And I will warn you in advance, do not browse this in the store and flip to the end, because something will be spoiled for you, and it's a punch to the gut. So when you get there, don't say I didn't warn you. Uh, next up this week, we've got Age of Ultron, book five, written by Brian Michael Bendis with art by Brian Hitch. And uh, I really enjoyed Ultron going so far, but this is the first issue that really grabbed me and made me kind of feel, this is the turning point where we see the heroes start to become proactive and maybe try and figure out, or actually most of we see them arguing about the best way to save the world uh, and maybe arguing that they can't effectively save the world. 
Uh, there's, we finally uh, have assembled the majority of the remaining people together in the Savage Land at one of Fury's bunkers, uh, which we saw at the end of the last issue. Luke Cage has died to bring us a vital piece of information that may allow us to stop Ultron. And it was just, it was really fun. It, it had the grand scope of a crossover. It had the potential for long-reaching ripples in the Marvel Universe. And I just, it was the first uh, Age of Ultron book that I could really stand up and go, Yes! Because that's what I do when I read comics. I go, Yes! He stands up and does that. Indeed. <laughs> Saga number 12 is next on my list, and this is also on Josh's list. In fact, he, when we were comparing notes this morning, I, I think he wanted to talk about the three books that I wanted to talk about. <laughs> um, so he can chime in anytime on this one, because I'm sure I'm going to forget something. Uh, this is uh, focused, this issue's focused on Prince Robot the Fourth, uh, and where he's been for the last couple of issues, and uh, it's... I, I can't t I can't tell you too much about this if because it will spoil things if you've been reading it. Um, if you haven't been reading it, I know some of you have chimed in that you picked up the first issue or so and it just didn't work for you, so you dropped it, and that's fine. I, I get that, but the majority of the population of comics readers uh, disagree with you, <laughs> and it is just an outstanding book. Um, I, I do like that we're seeing a little bit more with Prince Robot the Fourth here, and, and we're not de uh, dealing so much with. Uh, the core characters, meaning Alana and Marco and Hazel, uh, but they do make an appearance as well. So you get everything that you want in a saga book. Plus the back matter in, in this book is always worth the price of admission. Um, I will point out that if you're reading comics digitally, you won't be able to find this one digitally because iTunes dropped it from the store because it's got graphic gay sex in it. So um, <laughs> just a little bit. But anyway, you won't be able to find it, so hit your local comic book store and pick up the hard copy, and then keep coming back to your local comic book store and support print. Thank you. I can't wait till that gets auto-tuned. <laughs> so, I will point out that if you're reading comics digitally, you won't be able to find this one digitally because iTunes dropped it from the store because it's got graphic gay sex in it. Uh, graphic, 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 graphic gay sex in it. <laughs> so, um... Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Graphic gay sex in it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my next pick this week is uh, Avengers <laughs> Assemble number 14. All Josh can think about now is graphic gay sex. <laughs> uh, this is written by Patrick Ewing? No, Al Ewing. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, with art by Butch Geis Geichi. Who's Gucci. it written by? Pat Ewing. Okay, I thought it was supposed to be written by someone else. Al Ewing. It says Ewing. J.R. Ewing? <laughs> oh, okay. So anyway, uh, one of the things I've actually really liked about the way they've structured Age of Ultron is that there's not a lot of tie-ins. There's only tie-ins that actually matter. And uh, I like the way they're structuring them to answer questions. Uh, one of the first questions we had after reading the first couple issues was, is this Peter Parker... Peter Parker, or is this Doc Ock Peter Parker in the Age of Ultron? So we got a Superior Spider-Man issue that answered that definitively, was good, and added to the nature of the story. This is kind of the same thing. One of the questions when Black Widow shows up in California is what happened? Because she looks a little different, has some messed upness over in this region. And this Avengers Assemble issue takes you with Black Widow from the start of the Age of Ultron into the present. So this is actually the first time we've ever seen any part of the actual start of Age, because the book kind of drops us in the middle. It's very cool. It sets up kind of Black Widow's character, and it's just a lot of fun. I really like the way that they're making a cohesive universe out of a limited number of stories. This is the way that events should be handled. There shouldn't be a bunch of bullcrap that we don't actually need just slapped on the title to sell books. They're doing a good job with this one. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, these are our recommendations this week. There's plenty more to choose from, so come on down. Come on down to Alter Ego Comics, and we'll hook you up with some great reads. Graphic Gay Sex. See Josh for that. <laughs> uh, thanks, as always, for watching. Uh, please post your comments below. We'll try to keep this cleaner next month, next week, whenever we're back here. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, we'll see you. Bye. See you next time.
Yes!